Hey, my name is Bob Goldberg. Um, I'm from the uh, Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering, and my laboratory is in the Petit Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience. And I'm happy today to give an overview of some of the research going on in my laboratory, which I've titled The Degeneration and Regeneration of Musculoskeletal Tissues. So diseases and injuries to musculoskeletal tissues collectively represent the most common cause of severe long-term pain and physical disability worldwide. The cost to our society in the U.S. alone is over $200 billion. And therefore, with that motivation in mind, the overall goal of the work in my laboratory is to better understand the mechanisms of tissue degeneration, as well as establish new regenerative strategies that will advance therapies for a wide range of high-priority clinical problems, including, for example, osteoporosis related to bone, osteoarthritis related to cartilage degeneration, uh, growth plate and development disorders, as well as composite injuries to bone, vasculature, and nerves associated with severe limb trauma. To meet this goal, we have developed and utilized a, a wide range of enabling technologies, including biomechanical modeling techniques, uh, as you can see here, looking at the initiation of micro damage in bone as we age, and the associated local stresses that are uh, responsible for that micro damage. A variety of different biomaterials, including nanofiber meshes and three-dimensional scaffolds, uh, protein delivery systems, stem cells from uh, different sources, as shown here, stem cells from bone marrow migrating on nanofiber meshes. Uh, we use preclinical testing models to evaluate these different enabling technologies and, and therapies before taking them into the clinic, and a variety of different imaging techniques to use as outcome measures. Perhaps our favorite enabling technology is microcomputed tomography imaging, or micro-CT imaging. Uh, this uh, X-ray-based imaging technique is a highly efficient, three-dimensional, quantitative imaging technique that gives you analyses of not only tissue morphology, but also the composition of the tissues. The resolution is down to the micron level, and as you can see here, you can do in vivo longitudinal scanning over time. This is, in fact, the standard technique that's used for looking at changes in the microstructure of, of bone uh, associated with aging as well as diseases such as osteoporosis. Over the last 10 years, we've taken the advantages of this technique and begun to apply them in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine for looking at three-dimensional scaffold biomaterials, as well as looking at bone regeneration. And then most recently, we've further extended the use of this technique by adding in contrast agents that allow us to not only look at mineralized tissues, but also begin to look at non-mineralized tissues, such as cartilage and bone, and cartilage and blood vessels. So just to give you one example of that, this is a rabbit distal femur, which if we scan on a micro-CT system, we get an image of the mineralized tissue, but we don't see any of the cartilage on the surface of the joint. But by equilibrating this joint in a contrast agent, we can now see the articular surface, including, for example, uh, scalpel marks that were made in, in the uh, surface of the joint, as well as the insertion points for the ligaments. And most importantly, we can actually separate the bone and the cartilage and analyze these uh, in a segmented fashion so that we can look at changes in the surface of this joint. So for example, this is the articular surface of the cartilage uh, that we have analyzed, and we've looked at the morphology, and in particular the thickness of the, of the cartilage, and mapped that across the surface of the, uh, the joint surface. So we're using this for a variety of different purposes. One of them is to look at the progression and treatment of osteoarthritis. Um, this is a model we've developed in rats in which we inject monosodium iodoacetate, which induces very rapid uh, degeneration of the joint. And so we would inject this biochemical at time zero and then use this contrast-based imaging technique to look at the changes in the joint at different time points. Here you can see just one example, three weeks out uh, after injection, where the degradation of the cartilage uh, has proceeded down to the surface of the trabecular bone. And we can use this technique not, not only to better understand osteoarthritis, but also then to look at different therapies that are being developed to treat osteoarthritis. And some of the companies that we work with uh, 
in the Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience are now using this te technique to test some of their osteoarthritis therapies. Now to move on and give you another example related to our regenerative medicine work. This is a model we've developed in rats to look at large bone defects. This is a large bone defect in the rat in which we use a plate uh, to fix the defect and are able to study different strategies repair for repairing these very large and challenging bone defects. The plate model that we use allows us to use in vivo micro CT to monitor the progression of bone ingrowth as well as to do biomechanical testing of the functional restoration of the limb. Here you can see that if we implant a biomaterial only into the defect, and this is a biomaterial that was invented at Georgia Tech that has longitudinal porosity to induce growth from one end to the other, we get an increase in the bone ingrowth, but, are not, but we are not able to repair uh, the function of the, of the limb. So that means we have to add some sort of biological component. And there are different regenerative strategies that can be employed. One can use three-dimensional scaffolds to provide a template for regeneration. Uh, or one could use what's called guided bone regeneration, in which there's essentially a two-dimensional membrane that's provided on the outside of the defect. And the interior is filled with uh, biologic cues that help to restore uh, the defect. And this is one example of such a study in which we've used uh, a membrane composed of a nanofiber mesh, either without perforations or with perforations. And we are filling that nanofiber mesh with an alginate gel that's delivering a protein in a sustained manner. So here you can see the release of the protein over time. And we get a, a release of about 7 to 10 days of this, of this protein. So the way this uh, experiment would proceed is we create the segmental defect. We put on the nanofiber mesh guided membrane and then sort of fill it like a sausage with these regenerative cues. Here you can see the surgical picture with the implanted nanofiber mesh. And here are some of the results. Comparing different groups at four weeks, the mesh alone, there's no repair. Mesh plus the hydrogel, there's no repair. Um, but either the mesh alone or the perforated mesh with alginate and BMP, you can begin to see some bone formation even by four weeks. And by 12 weeks, particularly in the perforated mesh and alginate and BMP, there's very nice bridging of this defect. Now that's a very qualitative result, and so we used micro-CT as enabling technology again to quantify this. And you can see at four weeks, the perforated meshes are significantly greater than any of the rest, and BMP has a significant uh, effect on the repair. And by 12 weeks, both of the BMP groups have completely bridged those defects. Most importantly, we have to look at function. And so if we test these now following the experiment to look at how well we've been able to restore the mechanical strength of these long bones, you can see that compared to the intact controls, group four, which had the perforated meshes and BMP, uh, were non-significantly different from these intact uh, controls, indicating that we've developed a technology now that is able to restore function to these very challenging defects within just 12 weeks. And this work now has been patented and is being moved on to testing in large animal models. So to conclude, in the end, our job, we feel, is to make an impact by identifying some of the grand challenges. And, and some of our current work is being funded by the military to look at severe limb trauma coming back from soldiers from the war, to identify these grand challenges, and then investigate fundament, fundamental mechanisms that are required to overcome some of the barriers to repair and apply our different biomaterials and imaging techniques to enable the development and translation of improved clinical options for patients with musculoskeletal injuries and diseases. Finally, I'd like to just show the outstanding group of postdocs, graduate students, and staff who currently work in the lab, as well as several that have already graduated from the lab and currently have jobs in academia, industry, and the government. Thank you.